Gosh, I wonder how much time I've spent in the backseat of an Uber. Nick has spent 500 hours since 2013 in the backseat of an Uber. Have you been there the whole time? Welcome to our show, still to be named. To be determined for sure. I'm your host, Nick, and with me in the studio is... Samir. Hi, folks. All right, so today we are going to take your clever title suggestions and work them into our clever, witty banter while we wait to choose the one title, the one title to rule them all. So see if you can catch your suggestion hidden in our completely unscripted remarks today. Um, and let's get started, it's gonna be a lot of fun. Nick, I know for a fact that you are a huge fan of Uber. I certainly am. Well, Samir, mostly I'm just really lazy. I quit driving, I quit taking public transportation, and I figure I probably take two to three Uber slash Lyft drive, uh, rides every day. Uh, and fun fact, our first employee here at Tech Change went on to open up the Uber office in Washington, D.C. So we have a lot of history. Yeah, certainly the, the Uber bloodline runs deep here at Tech Change. Um, that's why we thought this week we would just try to tackle some of the, your, your Uber data and just see how many hundreds of hours you spent behind <laughs> the seat of an Uber vehicle. Yeah, I think we're at something. I think I'm at around 2,000 2, rides so far. So uh, this will be fun. So Samir, talk data to me. Yeah, let's do it. Um, actually, getting your Uber data is pretty straightforward. Thanks to the great work of someone named UMM Jackson on GitHub. So if you're out there, thank you very much. As you can see here, um, he's made a tool uh, called an Uber Data Extractor. All you do is go to this website here. It's also below the video. And once you get there, you just drag this image to your bookmark bar. Once you do that, you log into your Uber history. You can see mine right here. And once you do that, all you have to do is click on the bookmark. And this works on any browser device and on most computers as well. So here, I'll click it right here. And within a few minutes, Nick, you get your entire Uber history. Amazing, so let's see how it did. Yeah, this is what the data looks like right here. Um, you can see there's quite a lot of information that gets here uh, from Uber. They send you two files. One of them is your start trip history, so everywhere you started, and then one is the end one. We'll look at the start one here. And you can see there's some really interesting data. There's the start uh, date, the start time, but also the address that you both begun and end every single trip at. Really useful. So Samir, we've got the CSV files. How does this uh, fare to Samir's infamous data cleaning score test? Infamous indeed. Well, it's actually about a three out of five for me. As you saw, it's pretty easy to get the data, Nick, but it takes a bit of work to convert those addresses into locations or latitude and longitudes uh, that can be read by some software to put it on an actual map. So three out of five, could be better, not too shabby, sort of the come see, come saw territory. Couldn't have said it better myself. All right, so I'd love to see if we can show some of the most common uh, visualizations here. What's a good visualization tool you'd recommend? Well, there's a lot of options here, right? There's some interesting time series information, so you might want to think about what tools would give you interactive like line graphs over time. Yeah. But because we have location data, let's go to one of our perennial favorites, Cardo which is a really uh, useful tool and a really accessible tool to visualize and interact with location data. Cardo, an excellent choice, sir. So um, again, I'd love to see kind of some of the places that I visit most frequently, if we can do that with inside Cargo, uh, Cardo, uh, particularly here in Washington, DC. So yeah. let's visualize. Let's do it. And for me, this is useful because I want to know where Nick has been so I can know not to go there. Very <laughs> helpful for me. And fortunately, there's just a perfect way to do that. So here we are at Cardo. I've logged in. Now there are different accounts you can have. Some are free and some are paid. The one thing to keep in mind is the free one keeps the data and the maps public. So keep that in mind when it comes to privacy information, et cetera. But you can see here a list of data sets I've uploaded to my account, including this one here, Start Trip 700, which just shows actually it's a data set of 700 uh, trips that you took in 2016. Amazing. A bit sad as well, but amazing certainly. <laughs> So here we are looking at the data set. Um, okay. There's two options here. There's a data view, which will look very familiar to you, right? It's kind of like a spreadsheet. Sure. And Cardo makes it pretty easy actually to manually enter and manipulate changes here as well. Wow. You can see on the left here, this column is super important. This is the latitude and longitude mm -hmm. uh, for each uh, uh, address, which is really important because when you click up here on map view, it'll toggle over and show you all of your locations on a map. And there we go. So you can see that I've clearly taken Uber in Washington, Baltimore, Philadelphia, and New York. But let's drill down to Washington, D.C. and see some of the rides that I've taken locally here. Yeah, sure thing. And one of the things we can do, in addition to just showing what, that, what was before, which is kind of a heat map, is show it over time as well. Mm. So you can see in the bottom left, we're kind of looping through uh, all the times that you've taken the trips in the past, in, in 2016. 
This is incredible. So we're actually starting to see some of the places that I spend the most time and frequent over time. And you can see my house uh, over there um, uh, on Owen 6th Street. And you can see um, I spend a lot of time at GW where I teach DuPont Circle, these are colleagues. So really incredible to think about the story that something like this might tell about how one spends their days and where one travels. Yeah, and also I think at a deeper level, especially when you start zooming out and you start seeing big clusters, it makes you wonder, you know, what is your carbon footprint just mm -hmm. from your Uber time? Um, so it's something to think about as well in terms of the impact we're having on the environment. Yeah, I particularly love the time dimension too, because I think that's unique to Cardo uh, yeah. and, and does, I think, help to tell that story better. So Samir, take us even further out. Uh, what else can you do with this data set? Sure thing. So I mentioned earlier, we're looking at just about 700 uh, trips in 2016. I took the liberty of looking at all 1,820 trips that Nick took uh, between 2013 and, uh, and 2017. Ooh. That's about 500 hours spent in Uber. So just simmer on that for a second back home. Indeed, we should all simmer on that. <laughs> so let's look at this top left graph first. I love this purple line here is actually showing um, the number of rides uh, by time of day. And what looks like, uh, not a huge surprise, but basically that I am taking most of my rides in the hours between seven and 10, usually to get to work or to a meeting, um, but that I actually walk home from work more than I take uh, Ubers back. And so um, not as many as we look uh, later on in the day. The gray bars here also fascinating, right, Samir? Because what this shows is the uh, average uh, fare cost by time of day. And it's looking like the fares are actually pretty high when I'm going to the airport or coming back late at night, much higher than you'd find during the day, not at typical surge times, which um, which I wouldn't have expected. Yeah, that's one of my favorite things about kind of tackling our own personal data is it'll challenge assumptions about our kind of everyday behaviors and spending. Mm -hmm. I too would have thought that between seven, eight, and nine, yeah. your fares would have been yeah. higher, but not so. And I also love this one on the bottom right here, which uh, really tells the story of my trips per month. And I started out as a much more casual user and over time it looks like I'm taking around 65, 70 trips a month. So, and the trend is certainly headed, I wonder if I'll hit 80 at some point. That's quite a, that's quite a few trips a day. So incredible to, to see this story unfold over time. Yeah, the story of an addict over time is what that is, Nick. <laughs> so uh, thank you all so much for watching. Do not forget to subscribe. Those are our two bits. Uh, you can also check out other episodes uh, on our channel below. And, um, and also, if you want to check out the tutorial, so kind of a walkthrough of how I got about to getting this data here and how you could do the same, including how you can geolocate your addresses, check out the link below. Oh gosh, Samir, it's my Uber driver calling. Um, okay, coming right down. Yep, I'll be there, right up front. Wait, but, but you were my ride. <laughs>